So the group, Republican Voters Against Trump, is launching a new billboard ad campaign looking to persuade moderate Republicans and Republican-leaning voters in four swing states. The billboards feature former Trump voters who now say they won't vote for him in the wake of his conviction last week in his New York City criminal trial. Let's bring in the executive director of Republican Voters Against Trump, Sarah Longwell. She's also a publisher at The Bulwark and host of the Focus Group podcast. Sarah, thank you so much for joining us to tell us more about this campaign and what you're hearing from Republican voters. Well, look, the question after the conviction, the political question, is will voters care? And from our perspective, you have to help make them care, right? The, the Republicans are out there right now, and they are building their own narrative, building their own echo chamber. They are all singing from the same song sheet that this was rigged, that we have a two-tier justice system. But we have to go on offense right now and make sure that voters understand mm -hmm. how unique how historically unique in a in a in a desperately dark way it is to have a convicted felon running for president. And so our program, Republican Voters Against Trump, it, it hinges on a key theory around permission structures, which is you need credible messengers to speak to these uh, swing voters. And so we have hundreds of people who voted for Trump in the past. Many of them have voted for him twice, who are explaining, and there's testimonials all over our website explaining why they won't vote for Trump again. Um, but after the conviction, we wanted to make sure that it stuck with people. I mean, we have watched Donald Trump, extraordinary things have happened, like his own vice president not endorsing him. And yet it kind of just rolls off voters' minds. You know, this Trump's been around for a long time. We have two functional incumbents. Um, and that creates a, a dynamic where voters just aren't as tuned in in ways that they might have. And so you have to go on offense. You have to have strong affirmative messaging mm -hmm. to make sure that things stick in the mind of voters. You can't just count on the idea that voters are going to hear conviction and walk away. You have to help them understand why mm -hmm. this is so extraordinary, why what he did was wrong, and why he's too dangerous to be in the White House again. So, Sarah, to that point about sure. the difficulty in making things stick to Trump, we also live in a world where it seems like everyone's attention span is a few fleeting moments, and then we all just sort of move on to the next yeah. thing. So it's not just there's a conviction. It's a conviction that happened at the end of May. Here we are in the first few days of June. We're still five months to the election. So how do you get it to resonate to stay in the forefront of voters' minds, not just now, but as they head into the ballot box? Well, look, this is uh, one of the ways that Democrats, I think, have to figure out how they're going to do their messaging strategy. Uh, I think that oftentimes they get really fractured around messaging and uh, have a difficult time going on offense as opposed to playing defense. And so part of this is to make sure that acknowledging Donald Trump's conviction is a regular feature in the way that Democrats are talking about him. And not just Joe Biden. You know, Joe Biden, as a messenger, has a particular role, I think, to explain to the country what he's going to do over the next four years. But Democrats Democrats need an army of surrogates who are out there making mm -hmm. an affirmative case, going on offense, going on attack against Donald Trump, making sure the country understands that he's a convicted felon and that he's a convicted, uh, been convicted of sexual assault and um, that he's uh, been convicted for, uh, you know, the things that he did with the Trump, Trump org uh, and mm -hmm. reminding people of the salience of January 6th. You know, it, it is really... Yeah. Um, this is a this is a this is going to be a choice about so who people dislike more who's the lesser of two evils and you've got to help voters understand that Trump is the greater of the evils. Yeah, and just to get that list complete, liable of sexual abuse, uh, defamation, and massive fraud, and then con a convicted felon who is openly hell bent on revenge. That's what we're dealing with. That's what voters have to consider. Executive Director of Republican Voters Against Trump, Sarah Longwell, thank you very much for being on this morning.